I want to go and sorry. Uh, did I want to go and and play with him in, in Florence for the summer? He said they'll pay your airfare over and back, and you get a, and there's a they have a room and uh, they have a, a a maid that cleans the room, the whole thing. So uh, he said, uh, you know, what do you think? And I couldn't do it because I. Had Oh, we lost Chris. Yeah, I was waiting Chris. for the answer why he couldn't do it. <laughs> huh, what, what I was hoping that Roger would show up because I found he probably will. Which I thought was pretty funny. Is Roger in one of those pictures? Roger, Is that Roger? The guy to the left. I see him. Yeah. Yeah, but the cigar. Yeah. Has everybody got that album? Maybe so. I don't know. I do have it. Really? Wow. Well, I just thought it was pretty funny. Yeah. Roger <laughs> was like baby face Nelson. Yeah. <laughs> Roger's number two. Billy's number one as far as being in the picture, and Roger's number two. There's Chris. <clears throat> I suddenly got bumped off there. Chris, we're all wondering why you couldn't go to Red Garter in Florence. Oh, I had just gotten married, and uh, and uh, I had just taken a job at, um, and I was finishing up a graduate degree. I have just too many things going on. Uh, but I would have loved to have gone over there. And, yes, and wow. years later, I went back to, to Florence and I looked where the club was. And it was in a great location. I could only imagine how much fun it would have been to spend the whole summer there. Larry went and, and he had a great time. Danny, Rubio, fact, Danny Rubio he, did it and he loved it. Yeah. In Florence? He, Larry yeah. came back in Florence. He came back with a handmade leather tuba case, which I think he had until he died, you know. It was like one of those lifetime purchases. Wow. Sure. They do beautiful leather work in Florence. Wow. I'd love to go to Florence. Been to Italy, but didn't make Florence. Do it. Do it. Do it. Yeah. Rome, Naples, or, Venice. Love Venice. Or come to Rome. Come to Rome in the winter and I'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> Find a place for you to stay and we can... You can come over when we cook and eat some pasta. Yeah. Enjoy yeah. Rome, enjoy Venice a lot. I love Venice. Mm. Oh, Venice is strange. Venice is like the being on the moon. <laughs> it is. Such a different environment. All right. Well, just pulling up. Oh, is that New York? That's New That's, York. Uh, That's the New York club, the, the sidebar. Yeah, I spent a lot of time there at the sidebar. <laughs> <laughs> I worked the sidebar on my nights when I wasn't playing. That was pretty neat, the circular sidebar. That was pretty good. Yeah. Where did the waiters get the drinks? Right behind the statue, there's a service bar. Oh, okay. You can't see it in the picture. The picture is deceiving. That's deeper than it looks. Yeah. Okay. But if you if you're looking straight ahead at the picture, behind the statue at ten o'clock, eleven o'clock, and eleven o'clock, as you look at the picture, that's where the mm -hmm. service bar was. Oh, yep. Okay. With a big barrel of peanuts in front of it. Right. Yeah. Be quiet. That Roger? Hey, yeah. Hello. Hello. Hey, Roger. How y'all doing? Okay. Good. Well, there, there. I'm invisible today. <laughs> Too much backlight. Yeah. I better turn around. You're in blackface or something. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. Show that when he gets on. Show that picture again. But. Uh, yeah, let me get it. Roger just sent some pictures too. Oh, okay, good. Um, there I go. There, there I am. There I've been. Now we can okay. see. 
I can yeah, start yeah. all over again. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's. Um, well, you look good with those glasses on, Tom. That's. I'm trying to see the stuff you just sent. Really? <laughs> I like them. I'm gonna get a pair like that. <laughs> uh, all right. Found that other picture you just showed me, Roger. And if you can. Yeah, I will. But this is one that I came up oh, with, yeah. which I thought looked That's really good. good. Oh yeah! Wow, I like that car a lot. I went down to Florida to get that car, and wow. we drove back. And uh, it's the first time I'd been on the highway, and we're just passing cars. People are honking and waving at us. You know what the hell is <laughs> going so fast in that old car? <laughs> I drove it back to New Orleans from New Orleans to New York. Yeah, well, that's the, that was just due to the circumstances. <laughs> I like the bell bottom pants. Yeah, that was taken out in City Park. Yeah. I kept that, uh, never got around putting your father's mustache name on the side. <laughs> but that replaced our fire truck. Yeah. Couldn't haul as many people, but it was, it was pretty, pretty, pretty neat looking. No, it was. Fun times. All right. So. Yeah. I used to like that fire truck. I drove it around a few times when we, we drive around the corner and stuff. Was that the fire truck? Yeah. Well, that was fun driving, wasn't it? it was, yeah. <laughs> when, we, when we first got that up in the plots, I was driving around and I had the, the siren still on it and the bell. I was using it. The police pulled me over and said, you know, you, you can't be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, okay. He said, just take the siren and the bell off. It'd be fine. So we hung the bell in the club, and uh, oh, yeah. I forgot we just got rid of the siren. I guess <laughs> yeah. that's a classic. There, that was taken out. We used to have uh, record contest sales between all the clubs, and the winner uh, outside of New Orleans would get the free trip to come to Mardi Gras. And so I, I sent this picture, our postcard out to all the other clubs. Tell them forget it. We're not going to win anything. <laughs> and that's me. And that's Scotty Hill. That's Gary Nickerson. That's Greg Doolin up in the back. I don't know who that is with the gas mask on. And that's Neil Unterser with the pipe in his mouth. We took that in the back of the club. I still have some of those postcards. Huh. Oh, pretty funny. Look how young Scotty was. Jeez. Oh, yeah. Good old Scotty. Scotty was a free spirit, that's for sure. He was a very interesting person, a great musician, and very knowledgeable of music. After the mustache, I worked with him every Sunday morning for a bunch of years. You never guess where we played at TGI Fridays. <laughs> really? TGI Fridays on Veterans Highway every Sunday morning for years. Well, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good little gig, probably. It was. Barry, you still playing your banjo? No, I retired now. I retired. Well, I know you retired, which doesn't mean you stopped playing your banjo. I haven't touched it. It's two feet from me. I got six banjos two feet from me. And they're always. Well, I, want to, I want you to start practicing. I'm going to get you a gig. <laughs> one, day, one day I'm going to pick it up again, but right now I'm taking a little break. Oh, well, you should go out and volunteer somewhere with it. You're so good at it and you love it. So. <laughs> we were talking about other, other um, waiters. I don't know if this is New Orleans or, but there's some other ones. Well, that's. Uh, I can't tell who's on the far le left as we look at. Is that Randy Alley? It looks like Randy, yeah. And that's his brother next to him, is it? No, Ed. I don't think that's Ed. Okay. Tom, that's not you on the right? Oh, yeah. It kind of looks like you. Uh, yeah. no. Hard to tell. Yeah. Well, this must have been during a Mardi Gras or something, huh? I thought it was Tom all the way on the right. Yeah, that's what I was saying. 
That's what it is. That might be Ed next to Randy, if that's who it is. Who's that third? Well, this this might be John Leonard, too. The head. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. The first guy on the left is John Leonard. Yeah. This one of them that popped up, and I thought again, different waiters. I don't guess that's Joe Malenko. No, that's not Joe. Third one. Yeah, I can't. It was amazing about those bar songs. The 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 shitty the performance was. The more the people liked it. <laughs> I didn't. Uh, one time during the Mardi Gras, the waiters got up there and they had taped on the on the rear end, "Happy Mardi Gras." Mardi Gras seventy two. No, no, we had magic marker on our rear end. Uh, it was Mardi Gras seventy two. That yeah, seventy two. <laughs> I, I wonder who helped, who helped put the tape on each other. The girls. <laughs> it was 1972. I was seven and two. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jesus. Did a few crazy oh, things. loved it when the pants dropped. Yeah. Yeah. And here. There's, no, there's not a picture of that anywhere. It should be somewhere. But, <laughs> I think these are the original mustaches. Oh, yeah. well, that's when the, the New Orleans Club first opened. My goodness. That's a, which was in, uh, I think, April of 65, something like that. Dalton Diamond is up in the far right hand corner. Isn't that uh, Jerry Goodnight? About third from the left. Who's that? Jerry Goodnight? I don't know. Brian Wallace is in there. You guys know Brian Wallace? He's right in the middle. He was from, most of these people were from uh, the East Coast. They came down to help open the club up. So the guy's name was Jerry Goodnight? Yep. He's the first banjo player I ever saw at the mustache, Jerry Goodnight. That's him on the third, third from the right in front, or third from the left. So when people were telling him goodnight, he was, oh yeah, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I played side for him uh, in Denver. Notice a sign up here. I guess it says, get your Confederate hats. I think it's what it says. <laughs> yeah. And appearing nightly, mustache stompers. Yeah. All right. The world's worst banjo band, it says. I used to say. <laughs> huh. yeah, and this is when they, ha they actually held out the Dixie flag. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that was a while ago. Yeah. Still had the flag when we worked there. It was up on the wall. Yeah. And I never saw these hats. Mm -hmm. Well, we discontinued them. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. All right, well, let me find out what, Ra Roger, you sent some pictures. Let me download them. Where's Billy Blank today? Whoops. That's a picture of Cape Cod. <laughs> that didn't look like much fun. That's that's George French holding a screwdriver. And that car is a 56 Chevy that I sold to Fred Hendricks so I could have a ride to Cape Cod. And that's me working on something 
Get in the screw. <laughs> <laughs> George you, came up in. You asked for that. a screwdriver and you got it. Yeah, I got screwed there. <laughs> Roger, now I know why you're always smiling. Yeah, happy boy. <laughs> the lungs is not too tight. <laughs> We drove that car from uh, Independence, Missouri to Cape Cod. And uh, I met Fred, I was down in Southeast Missouri State College, and I met Fred up in Independence. And the car he had broke down. Before that, he wanted to know if I wanted to go to Cape Cod. And I said, dude, what I said, I can get your job with the mustache. Because we had met Joe at the mustache in New Orleans prior to that. I said, okay. So when his car broke down, I thought, well, hell, I don't have any money. Going to Fred, I said, Fred, you got a broken car. I don't have any money. I'll sell you my car. I'll have some money to go to Cape Cod and you'll have a car to get us there. So off we went. <laughs> and mechanic service while you were going. <laughs> Fred had that car for a while. We came back to New Orleans in it. This had a spring fiesta parade in New Orleans, obviously. Now that old truck you said before that was chain driven? Chain driven, yes. Why well, 1928. American La France fire truck. I bet that was hard to find people to work on it. Yeah, well, I, I found it up in Laplace, Louisiana. And we went up there and we went in this garage. This guy had all kinds of neat old cars and a couple of trucks and, and everything. And we talked to him about it. He said, oh, yeah, I got it running good. Nothing wrong with it, you know. I guess it was sort of a hobby. And did sell it. And uh, it was funny as hell. He said, can anybody drive it so I can drive it? <laughs> so <laughs> I drove it back to New Orleans down there. I was 61, I guess it was. Uh, yeah, Amer then the airline highway. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, Warren right. Spotsman down on the trombone up front. And Don Summers on the tuba. Uh, looks like Bruce O'Neill on the banjo on the back. I can't remember the other guy's trombone player's name. Hmm. Who's driving? Huh? Who's driving? That's uh, Ron Manuel. Okay. He stayed in New Orleans for a while. Then uh, I took him out to Denver to be the manager out there. That fire truck got us a lot of special events and parties, parades, whatever. Yeah, let me, I got some other ones in a fire truck. Let me find it real quick. Fire truck. Well, where's Billy Blank today? He's taking care of his grandkids. Taking care of who? His grandkids. Oh, okay. That's a good job. Well, his daughter's having oral surgery. Oh. So there's the truck. Roger. Oh, that must be the same. That's the same parade. Same parade, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, see that guy who jumped on a truck riding? <laughs> that guy there. Asian guy. I turn around and say, what are you doing up there? <laughs> yeah. So New Orleans and New York were the only two clubs that had fire trucks, Roger. Do you know the answer to that? Yeah. Yes, right. yeah. Hey everybody. Hey, uh, New York and New Orleans were the only two clubs that had their own fire truck. Is that correct? Uh, we had a car, Bar, not a fire truck. No, I'm talking about before the car. Oh, that I don't know. This was a red garter, but that's Joel on here, I think. Yeah, that's when it was still called the red garter, yeah. 
but it was yeah, it was still the same club, and that was uh, I guess that's a car. Yeah, nice car. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Nice top hat, whoever that was. Nice crew cuts on everybody watching the parade. <laughs> <laughs> Who are the other banjo players? Well, Kim's one of them. I don't know who the one is. I can't tell who the one is on the front. Yeah, I don't know the person in the front. I wonder what those kids in the back of the truck are doing. That's what, what I was looking up? at. They got something going on. <laughs> they run over somebody or? <laughs> yeah. They're, scra <laughs> they're scraping them up. Yeah, well, I, could, I could see somebody driving the truck, driving the car, and the guy's on the front, the banjo player, and then he's not there. And you go, "Hey, what happened to Joe?" Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Look how the front window is opened. Yeah, the windshield. Oh, yeah. Huh. Wow, nice car. Oh yes. <laughs> Well, so, whatever happens in those cars. So, Ira, how's the weather in Boynton Beach? Rainy season. Rains almost every day, but it's nice. You know, 85. It's nice. Now, see, that looks like, is that, is that the, Muslim, the New Orleans truck? I no, think. that's Cape Cod. Uh -huh. So Cape Cod had a fire engine also. Yeah, we had a fire engine and a, a dirt race car drive a uh, car. See, that's the question I was asking. How many clubs had a fire engine? I think we had one there. I think we had one in Denver. So that Cape Cod uh, engine just sat there the rest of the year? Or was that open 12 months a year? No, that, that, that fire truck, we're, we're getting ready to go in the July 4th parade. We all went out and got, got on the truck and we took our picture. But was the Cape Cod Club open all year round? No, no. no. It's a summer club. So, so what do they do with the truck during the winter months? Just keep it in storage? Behind the, the club, there was a huge uh, barn. Oh, uh, okay. Kept it in there. Then next to the barn, there was an area called the chicken coops. Because when you went up to the Cape, if you didn't live close by, you stayed on premise and lived there. And so out back in these little rooms, we, we had uh, beds and stuff, met our own beds, private area, and then we slept there and everything, and anything else that went on. <laughs> <laughs> we only can imagine. Yeah, you don't want to imagine. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I first started working, at your father's mustache. Okay, and the guy up in the top with the, the, the boulder on, with the tambourine hand, that's Jim Rudnick. He came out of Chicago and he's up there with his wife and uh, he managed the club up there. And when I got there, he said he didn't have any work if I could paint. I said, yeah. So we painted the barn out back. And then you know, I said, I need more work. So Fred and I cleaned the club up during the day. And then I, I said, he gave me, he said, can you park cars? I said, yes, we have a big parking lot out back. I started parking cars. Hmm. We must have my first job I had with him. And then I got one inside and started waiting on tables. And is that Fred right behind you? On the huh? Is that Fred on the fire truck behind you? Yes, that's Fred standing yeah. up there. Yes, it is. We had a great time up there. That's a that's the first time I, I saw the ocean. Sure. Yeah, there's no ocean in Missouri. No, no ocean. <laughs> I was so excited. It's cold as hell. That water up there is very cold. Right. We had a great summer. 
Great way to spend the summer. Good old pictures. Yeah. You just leave and you get out on Missouri and you go up to Cape Cod working <laughs> like, like a dream job. <laughs> well, there's the car again. And here's the car. Here's the, Tom, there's the alley. Yeah. And this is, this is Carol. And who's behind Carol with the fingers? That, I don't know if that's me or not. Because I don't, I don't know who took the picture, putting the, the rabbit ears on her head. And here's, this is David up here, because I think this was David's house. What's on, that now? Yeah, it sure was. I, it sure was. His house. And here's David up here now. Yeah, it sure oh. is. That was his house. I recognize the photo. Yeah. Yeah. Who was that up, up on the stairs? I think that's it's David Krippner. David Krippner. Well, this actually, I lived in, in one of those houses back there, and David didn't live there. The people that lived above me ran the warehouse. This went on Valmont Street. What's that? David's house was on Valmont. Yeah. Off yeah. St. Charles. I remember I went there several. And the girl Carol, I met her in Mexico. And she wanted to come to New Orleans. I said, okay. She's a little sweetheart. <laughs> All right, so we'll stop that one. Here comes your dog. Yeah. Okay, and here's you like to get up on the couch. Well, you know, she she thinks she runs. She does run the place. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, yeah. Uh, this yeah. is a a picture that was taken out at uh, a paint shop. That painted the truck. We had a paint, had it repainted bright red. Mm -hmm. And then after they painted it, I had Neil Underseer do all the lettering on it. Mm -hmm. the thing. Then we got it done. The guy went out for the name of the paint shop was Light New. So could you bring it back? I want to take a picture of it. I said, sure. So we all went out to we take a picture of it and use uh, it in the I got that picture too. Let me see. Oh, you have the picture That's of the light new? Yeah. I yeah, right. In that, in that last picture, you, you were talking about waiters from different clubs. That was Mike Mulligan in the front, I think. Yeah, there's that uh, paint shop. Yeah. He was happy to paint the truck. Oh, I bet he was, because he's probably used to painting cars. And... Yeah, and plus he used it in his ads and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so it was a win-win for everybody. Neil did a great job of the lettering, just oh, like, yeah. like the, the mustache uh, logos and everything. Hmm. That was a neat truck. Yeah, let me go back to the, somebody was asking about the one I had before. Yeah. Was it this one, Chris? Yeah. That's Ron Bizell, uh playing lead. Uh, no, that's George Bird. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. Yeah. And that's Bruce O'Neill next, next to him. Don Summers on the tuba. Warren Spotswood and uh, Vince Vance. <laughs> but the guy on the bottom right looks like a, a waiter from the New York club. He's from the Gary Nickerson was his name. Oh, okay. All those young guys look the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were young and thin. <laughs> and hair. <laughs> Up and hair. Yeah. Quick to respond. <laughs> Who's the banjo player next to Bruce O'Neill? Who? Bird. Oh, that's George Bird. Ah, okay. He played banjo for quite a while in New Orleans. Who's that in the front next, next to you, Ron? Oh, the album or something, I guess. You know. Where? In the front of the, up, up front. Right in front of you. Oh, that's uh, Edwin Krebs. 
Oh, is that Edward? Oh, okay. Yeah. I think I still have one of those albums. I do too. I think I have the same album, Chris. That's yeah. the red cover. And you play it every other night, right? That was a good <laughs> album. That was one of the better albums. Oh, you God. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, I've got I got the truck organized pretty well. I got more truck pictures. We can call this episode "Trucking Along." <laughs> yeah, really? There it is again. <laughs> Sixty-seven. Well, that's Neil Wedersayer playing lead banjo up top, and George Berg and Don Summers. It looked like us in uh, Connecticut, no trombone player. <laughs> <laughs> you got the peanut guard on the tuba. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who's playing the tuba? Looks like Don Summers. Don't know. Okay. Painter. How many fire oh, trucks did you guys have there? Just one, but it was a lot of places. Really? Just one truck? One truck and one car. Wow. Right in front of, that's in front of the club there. <laughs> you tell who's... Roger, you must have a closet full of um, funky clothes. <laughs> who's who's the girl holding the uh, other side of the poster thing? I don't know. Were all the doors on the balcony that we're looking at your father's mustache? Yeah. Yeah. All three of them. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It was above the clarity. Was that still? Yeah. Was, was the two ones to the right are actually above, above clarity, or Andy's or Intellect. Yeah. It was. Mm. It was still the, the that stairwell went up right on the other side of clarity and up to our upstairs. Yeah, because these, I think, the the two in front of Andy's were original, and then where this line is, they added on. I'm sure. Yeah. Let me. Let me find that. Yeah. Shoot. Some neat old pictures, my goodness. A few years ago. <laughs> There were five. I thought there were five doors here. Yeah. Yeah. See, these were original, and mm -hmm. then there was a break here because the because the older picture that we have, which I could find, didn't have this up here. Yeah. You can kind of see where they built it on. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dream. Mm -hmm. Storage and stuff like that. And the and originally the balcony wasn't there. Yeah. Well, that facade is still there, but everything inside is new. Yeah. It's a seafood restaurant, some seafood restaurant. Meat, you know, fair at best, but it's, it's there. What happened to Roger? Where did he go? I don't know. Oh, he must have gone. And you know what? I already was ashamed they tore down the mustache in New York. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. See, yeah. See, I don't know for sure, but we were around, Ira, you and I. But right. the last days of the New York club, it was crowded. Packed. It was packed in there every night and they decided to close it. I think yeah. that I think that whoever owned that property got a good offer for that location to put something else there. And it was an offer too good to turn around, so they closed the mustache. I'm sure. I don't think it would have still been open today, but I think New Orleans would have been. Yeah, if Joel had brought had bought the property from that lady, it probably yeah. would have still been going because he had it. Roger had some plans drawn up. He and Ed and I looked at him one day. It was going to be a little different, but it's beautiful, obviously. But I think you're right, Ira. If there wasn't a fire in New York, the New Orleans Club probably still would be going on. I don't know what it would look like, but it'd be going on. I New think York, it would still be open today. I think so, too. I think New York probably would have eventually closed. Yeah. But at the you guys end, should come out of retirement and open it. But at the end, we were packed every night. And they decided to close the business down, and then they tore yeah. down the building and put mm -hmm. up that grocery store and health club. That's yeah. a shame. That's a shame. Yeah. Great location, too. Well, that, that's what I'm talking about. That's why yeah. I, the offer was so good, because the location was so good. Right that's on the corner there. 7th and 10th. Yeah, I think the location in New Orleans was great. Right on Bourbon? Oh, right in the middle, yeah. Great location. Yeah. yeah, New Orleans, I think we had the best location on Berber Street, right in the center of every, right in the center of yeah. the center block. <laughs> yeah. Great location. Wish I could, I wish I could have gone to the New York Club. Went to Denver, but I never got to the New York Club. I wish I could. New York was fun. I like Denver. I was in Denver for about eight weeks, too. Uh, that's New Orleans, I guess. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's Bourbon Street. I don't know, where'd you live in Denver? I stayed with Mike Johnson actually for about six, eight weeks. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. Where is Mike tonight? He's not here, huh? He's yeah. probably not feeling well. He wasn't feeling well last week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, last week I wasn't here. Hey, Barry, two weeks ago that you missed, I told everybody I spoke to Zafran on the phone. Yeah, I saw that. I yeah. wasn't. Uh, I watched the replay. Mm hmm. I watched the replay, Zafrana. Fellas, I'm about to let y'all go. Oh, Roger. Where are you going? Huh? I got oh. blown off. The damn alien's down You're here. You're back. <laughs> Stay trying to land in Arizona see. again. We'll see y'all next week. Okay. Have a good Take week. Care. Take care. Take care, Rick. All right. Ah, uh, there's New York. New York, New York. A wonderful town. There's, there's Joe Terrace clapping hands on the uh, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> I wonder what happened to those uh, hands. That was a very interesting bar. I bet that was fun. That was classic. I wonder what happened to the bar once they closed the club. Well, you know, what's funny. I'm looking at that picture. There's no wooden railing along the bar. Remember there was a railing where the people would walk, wait, Barry? Yeah. Yeah, it's not there. I think this picture was probably taken before they built that railing. It had to be. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh. So if they had a bar song, would the waiters get on this round bar? Or? Yeah, yeah, the round bar. Okay. Yep. But facing toward the back of the club. Right, I got that. And that picture doesn't do the club justice. If you go to your right, another... One third of the whole shot, that's where all the chairs were. Yeah. Right. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, this picture skews the, the way it, it, it plays. It's an illusion, optical illusion. <laughs> that happened in there a lot. Oh, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's funny, Barry. I don't see the projector up there hanging from the ceiling either. Oh, yeah. The projector was right in the middle of the bar, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. because you had to climb up climb up on a stool to, to set it off, you know, to start it, to stop it. It's yeah, not we stood on the bar there. and changed the reel. 
Yeah. It's not this thing hanging down from the ceiling, is it? This photo, my, I think, is predates all that. Yeah. It has to. Although that statue was in the club. I think oh, that yeah. statue was left over from when it was Nick's. Yeah, yeah. I it was. It's Memories. When this was Nick's and when the, the mustache was the dream room in New Orleans, they both had that same ambience about it. Lots of red leather, real classy, lots of jazz music. And when you went in during the day and smelled it, it was like beer. <laughs> I remember that one. I remember a guy coming to the sale peanuts have a uh, very unique odor. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there we go. Russell that's Adams. All. That's all. Russell. That's Iris boy. Yeah. Yeah, see, all along the gas lanterns in the club is where a lot of the seating was. Yeah. And, and what's his name, Jeff? Uh, Jeff, the guy that died. Jeff Oswang. Oh, he said he's the one that put those gas lamps on the front of the building. Oh, really? I yeah. thought they came with the building. No, he said he put them on there. The office was right at the end there. Yeah, right down at the far right. Yeah. 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 That was a neat office we had in there. We all had these... Uh, Old antique grow top desk that's up in the room. And that became the Harry Lip office, didn't it? Well, yes. it's sort of a combo. Mm -hmm. That's where Murata worked out of. That's yeah. right. That's, well, when yeah. I was with it, went up there in 72, that's where I reported to the Harry yeah. Lip office, right next to the club. Mm -hmm. And Ron yeah. Sater had an office in there, and I had an office. And we had um, Kathy Goodleaf was up front. I thought they had an office on uh, 8th Avenue also, didn't they, Roger? An accounting mm -hmm. office. On, on, on what avenue, 6th? 8th, I think. I, don't know. I think on 8th Avenue there was an office. It seems like there was another one. I can't remember going over there much often. Because I remember Ron would be in there working, and, and uh, George French would come in and practice his banjo in the day. He just played the hell out of it real loud. Ron had to go to comments. <laughs> Cut it out. Calm down, will you, man? I'm trying to work. <laughs> man, I remember walking right away from the club, that top photo, walking across, Jay walking across the street to Smiler's Deli. You remember that? Uh, yeah. Smiler's and Rikers. Smiler's and Rikers. I go to Smiler's for like a 99 right. cent. I'd get a two slice cigar store, a two slices of white bread, and maybe a half pound of bologna for ninety nine cents. That was dinner for the whole day, man. Yeah. <laughs> that's easy. That, that's see, that's cuisine there. Bologna, mustard, and white bread, ninety nine cents. Yep. Smilers and Rikers. And then they had right right down right across the street Max's Pizza. Yeah. Max's was Max Snacks. Max's Pizza. You get yeah. a slice, a big slice of pizza for 25 cents. But if you <laughs> wanted pepperoni on it, it was 35 cents. Right. <laughs> yep. She was. Oh, that pepperoni. And it was decent pizza. Real good pizza. Yeah. Real good pizza, man. When I'd splurge and get pay for put 35 cents instead of a quarter, get some pepperoni on it. Otherwise, you just had cheese pizza, which is yeah. all right, too. His, his, his crust was unique because it was yellow. He said he put egg yolk in the in you remember the, in that? the right. Do you remember it? Oh, yeah. No, I don't remember that. <laughs> Max's Pizza. Right I know Max's. Right across the street from that photo we just saw. You walk right across, there's a rib. Yeah. It turned yeah. left a little bit, and that's where Max's Pizza was. 
Yeah, the, the rib the rib has been closed for years now. Well, they had the rib, then they had Smilers and Rikers and all that. Rikers. You crossed cross the street. I guess it was Grove Street. And that's where Max's Pizza was. That's, wow. that's, that's Nick's. Wow. Nick's was a steakhouse, right? No, jazz club. A oh, jazz club. Yeah. I have a couple pictures of the inside of that also. There's what? No gas lights on there. Yeah, I think somebody wanted that property real bad on that corner, and that's that was the end of the mustache. Oh, it had to be. It's a prime location. So this is yeah. where the mustache used to be? Yeah, it used to be a jazz club, uh, much beloved uh, jazz club. Uh, uh, I remember one night stand, st I was we were on a break. I'm having a smoke out outside, and a guy comes up and he goes, "Wait, this this is Nick's." And, the, and we said, "Oh no, Nick's is closed. It's now becoming your father's mustache." He <laughs> collapsed. He was like in tears. He <laughs> his life wasn't worth anything anymore because Nick's was closed. Uh, I don't know what kind of personal connection he had to it, but. Oh, he was heartbroken, just heartbroken. Wow. We took him into the side bar and bought him a drink, a double. <laughs> a lot of the jazz greats played there, like uh, Eddie Condon. And yeah. Wild Bill Davidson and all those guys, that's where they played. Mm. Guys, I got to run. We'll see you later. All right. Oh, take care, Snake. Guess what? It's, okay. raining, it's raining in Metairie. Well, good. You need it. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm going to go finish dinner here. All right, Chris. Yeah, go ahead. Right. See everybody next week. Stay well. See you all next All right. week. See you next All week. Right.